Hey everybody! I felt like doing something kind of different today. You know, usually I'm making either Animaniacs or MLP content or just something around a show or franchise that I like. Lately I've been looking at a lot of people's childhood trauma videos, especially some of my favorite YouTubers, so I decided to make a video about four things that for some reason scared me as a kid. Also, shout out to Shunks, by the way. I think she has, like, three childhood trauma videos, but she was the main inspiration behind why I made this video. So yeah, if you like MLP videos or her childhood trauma videos or anything like that, please go subscribe to her. Now without further ado, let's get on with the video. So the first one I'm gonna talk about is something that I actually mentioned to a few of my YouTube friends here, and we kind of joked about it for a while with like memes and videos and stuff, because we were all scared of it. Me, I think I was kind of scared the most, but I don't know. But we just thought it was weird that we were scared of that of all things. And the thing I'm talking about is the old Nick Jr. Productions logo. I'm pretty sure they changed it right now. Like, they changed it... It's not the way it was before, but I'm talking about the claymation one. That one, for some reason, shook me to my core. But seriously, just, just picture that, like, in the mind of a three- or four-year-old kid, and you're watching a brand new DVD of Blue's Clues or something. I'm just saying Blue's Clues because I remember these, like, logos or whatever popping up on Blue's Clues. But anyways, um, and the episode ends and you're greeted with these crappily, no offense to the animator, animated things and a bunch of scrambled bongo noises and children laughing and maracas shaking. It's, it's just overwhelming for a little one like that. Like, at least for me, it was kind of overwhelming. I mean, hell, I had a nightmare about it. I don't want to derail the video talking about the nightmare, but I'm just gonna explain it a little bit in the shortest way possible. But... I got a new Blue's Clues DVD. I think it was Blue's Clues. I don't know. I think it might have been Backyardigans. The TV, for some reason, the volume was cranked to the max. So I went to go get my mom to help me with the remote because you know, I was a little kid at the time. I didn't know how it worked. <laughs> but then I realized that there was no one in the house. I would call for mom. I would call for dad. Nobody was there. Not even my pet cat, who was my only pet at the time, Serafina, my cat. And then there was a glow behind me in the hallway. I turn around and my TV like takes up the entire freaking hallway and it's even louder now and I'm surprised I didn't go deaf in my sleep. But yeah, that was that's the only nightmare I can remember regarding that logo. I probably had more, I think. But I don't know, on to the next thing. For those of you who've grown up watching a ton of Cartoon Network and a lot of Boomerang for pretty much your whole life, you probably know what I'm talking about here, or you know what I'm gonna talk about, I think. I don't know if anyone had the same fear as me, but there'd be these bumpers on the Boomerang Network that would announce the next show, like it could be like Scooby-Doo, or the Flintstones, or I don't know, like Bugs Bunny, or Tom and Jerry, or something, Huckleberry Hound. But for some reason, these bumpers had to have, like, these creepy-looking toys. Like, for example, if the Flintstones was coming up next, they'd have these, like, creepy wind-up dinosaurs with Barney and Fred on the back. It's just, I don't know, something about them looks unsettling. It's not just the Flintstones ones. Like, even the Huckleberry Hound ones were the worst. Because the one I remember the most was, like, this one toy. I forgot what those toys were called, where there was, like, a little wooden peg on the bottom. And you move it around, it kind of makes the toy move around almost like a puppet. But for some reason, they made him, like, spaz out on camera. And the camera is right there in front of the darn thing. And the music does not help either. The music almost sounds like he's coming after you. You probably know what I'm talking about, that da dun da dun da dun da dun kind of thing. I feel like I should play a clip right now. Be warned that the video I'm about to show is pretty unsettling. So if you don't want to see anything like this, I suggest skipping past this part of the video. We now return to Huckleberry Hound on Boomerang of Cartoon Network. I literally had to screen record that with the volume down because the music on there still unsells me. It still puts a chill down my spine. I'm literally holding a Yakko plush right now. <laughs> Anyways, on to the next one. This next one is about the movie theater, because when I was a kid, 
I saw a lot of movies when I was a kid. Like Despicable Me, Spongebob Squarepants, Sponge Out of Water, Hotel Transylvania, Wreck-It Ralph, Inside Out, a lot of movies. For those of you who go to the Regal Movie Theater, if you have one wherever you live, you probably know what I'm talking about. I don't know if they still do it. I mean, I haven't gone to a Regal Movie Theater in a long time. I go to a different one now. But anyways, you, know, you just got your popcorn and some soda and you're gonna sit down and there's usually like some trailers or advertisements for some things. I remember I went freaking insane in the theater when Equestria Girls was an advertisement before Hotel Transylvania. <laughs> but anyways, getting off topic, the lights go dim in the room and then you're greeted to a black screen with like really dark gray text. And basically the text is telling you to turn off your phone and shut the hell up because everyone's trying to watch the movie and you gotta be courteous to everyone in the theater. That message goes out to you, ladies sitting next to my mom while we were trying to watch Inside Out. The thing that made it scary, or at least unsettling, wasn't the fact that there was just a black background with really dark gray text on it. It was the disembodied, almost robotic voice with this creepy piano music in the background with some slight robotic sounds, almost like computer noises, like something futuristic from a sci-fi film. I need to look it up on Google to see if anyone has posted it on YouTube. Holy crap, somebody found it, yes! Oh yeah, so I'm totally playing the clip, and again, if you find it unsettling or you just don't want to see it, please skip past this. Sprint asks you to please be quiet and courteous to others, and silence your cell phones now. Holy crap, I'm so happy I found that. I don't know how that person got a hold of it. God, I haven't been this happy since I got Rob Paulson and Jess Harnell's autographs for Christmas. But anyways, on to the next one. This final one is kind of embarrassing, but I'm gonna I'm gonna talk about it anyway, since it is something weird and it scared me as a kid. Now where are my Madagascar fans at? Because that's what we're talking about for this last one. Where where are my Madagascar fans at? So we're talking about the first Madagascar movie, not the second one, not the third one, not the Penguins of Madagascar movie or TV series. The first movie and third movie were the best ones, the second one sucks. So, you know in the beginning part of the movie where Marty is kind of fantasizing what it would be like in the wild and stuff like that? Well, the part that scared me was when Ben Stiller's first Sona jump scared me. You know the part, you know, when uh, Marty is like writing off into the sunset or something, and then all of a sudden there's Alex, and he's like, surprise! I remember we had to fast forward that part of the movie, because if he jump scared me, I would start crying. I was a very little kid at the time, so yeah. But yeah, those are the four weird things that scared me as a kid. Again, shout out to Shunks, go check out her channel and subscribe. Never stop showing your zany side, never stop being yourself, never stop being you. Peace out, everybody. And sleep well tonight, okay?